So today you are going to learn one of the sharpest lines of the French defense. Together with that beautiful scenery in the back, you see the sea of France and we are learning the French defense in France. What is the French defense? It is introduced by the moves e4 and pawn to e6. That's the French defense. It's kind of uncommon. I'm explaining that to my friend here in the video because Black doesn't take the center directly. Like, he could play e5 to control the center as well, but he goes e6, which doesn't control the center, but prepares a really important break Black always needs to play to also get control of the center, and that's d5, we will just see that in a moment. And I just asked my friend here to um, play the move for Black. He wanted to learn about the French defense, and obviously, he plays d5, he knew the idea already, Black wants to attack the center as well. And now it's White's decision which line he wants to play. They are really calm lines, like if White trades off the pawn on d5, it would just be even, very equal play, and Black has no issue at all. That should be a fine position. But the more critical line, and even the most critical line, I would say, is if White goes for knight to c3, and then we get a really sharp variation. If Black goes for bishop to b4, um, I don't remember the name of the variation directly now, but bishop to b4 is really the sharpest line. I think it's called Vienna. We see bishop to b4, and now the white pawn on e4 is attacked. Because the knight is pinned on c3, we need to do something with the pawn. And the best is, as you see in the video, white should push. He should keep the space in the center, should keep his good control and save his pawn. Now we see the very thematic break of Black. Black plays with c5. Also important to attack the white center. That's always what Black needs to do. He wants to attack the center to always um, break up the white structure. Now we see a3 um, by white. White asks the Black bishop a question where it wants to belong and it should be traded on c3. Now we see knight to e7 and we had for the most aggressive line now, the really interesting line, very direct as well, white goes for queen to g4. Directly attacking the pawn on g7 and black needs to do something about it, um, you may think at first. And castling is definitely an option here, but the more aggressive line and really interesting line we are going to have a look today is the line with queen to c7 and then the game starts to explode, basically. Queen to c7 and the idea of black is now that he wants to pressure on c3. We see it after queen takes g7, rook g8 and if a queen would take on h7 now, there would follow pawn takes d4. We will see it in a moment now, pawn takes d4. And the black idea is now that he may be able to take on c3 with a queen or if white recaptures on d4, queen c3 shrek would immediately win the white rook. So that's not an option for white. White needs to play something else. And here are a couple of options. I think knight f3 is also possible, but in that video I am going to discuss queen to d3. And I wanted to explain that line to my friend, because it's really thematic. White just protects the c3 square. And black has now a decision. He can take on c3, or he can take on e5 with check with the queen. That's what we have a look at in that um, short video and actually I played bishop e2 after that what may not be the best move because the pawn on g2 is hanging um, now I just made some more moves I will um, also show you the moves down in the left corner just to show how sharp that variation can get we see black uh, plays keeps on playing in the center gets a really nice initiative there and at the end you see a really complicated position. If you want to play those complicated positions and have a really aggressive game, you should definitely consider to play the line with black or with white, the Vienna in the French.